innocent. I N N O cent. Innocent. This is what happened to the Count of Monte Cristo, you know. Being railroaded into jail for a crime he didn't commit. There! There's your man, officer. I'm here in this rotten jail and he is running around scot free. Reuben, please. Oh, I'm glad you're here, Shirley. Just, just get me out of here. You tell this man how I was in Los Angeles during the robbery and tell him who the real prime suspect is. Who is the prime suspect? Huh. Where were you yesterday afternoon at 2 o'clock in Placerville? Huh? Do you remember the name of the bank? I wasn't in any bank. Huh. I was having a cup of coffee with my parole officer. Oh. Sure. Danny saw me. He was sitting a couple of booths away. He was wearing those glasses with the funny nose. Good news, officer. This man's got an airtight alibi. Me. Well? No luck? I tried. He won't even open his door. Well, I guess he's gonna leave it. I really did do my best, kids. He just won't listen to me. I'm sorry. Well, is there anything we can do? Hey, Mr. Bernhardt, where are you going? Grandma's sick. I have to go to San Francisco. Well, you don't have to just run off, Johnny. Hang around a few minutes. Let me buy you some breakfast. Uh, I'd take him up on that if I were you. It's an offer that's practically unheard of. Mr. Bernhardt, what's your favorite color? I ain't got one, kid. I gotta go. Mr. Bernhardt, this whole thing is my fault. Don't blame Mr. Kincaid or my family. Hate me. Hate you? Kidding? You're my star witness. You got me off the hook. Johnny, I understand why you want to leave. You don't think we trust you, but we do. Mr. Bernhardt, you know that nickel-plated revolver I said I was polishing? I don't have a nickel-plated revolver. No kidding? I don't even have any spare bullets. Please, give us a second chance. And the warden gave me a second chance. Got a shiny suit and $70. I think I got a little more this time. Mr. Kincaid, will you spring for steak and eggs? Sure. I can take it off my income tax. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kincaid, you better get rid of that windbreaker. <laughs> I guess that's it. The bus is pretty well unloaded. Johnny, I don't know how to thank you. If we ever need a temporary bus driver again, I certainly hope you're available. So do I. You're good people. Well, I guess I ought to go. Well, not yet. You have to stay for dinner. Uh, no, thanks, Laurie. I couldn't do that. I think it's easier if I just move on. Johnny, is something wrong? Yes, Mrs. Partridge, there is. It's that letter of recommendation you wrote for me. You know, a copy of it goes to my parole officer. I know. Well, that's the problem. I'm afraid it'll get me into trouble. But it was a very good recommendation. Oh, too good. You see, with my record, my parole officer will think I wrote that letter myself and forged your name. So could you tone it down a little? <laughs> I see. Anything you want. You're very understanding. <laughs> and to make it really official, I'll have everyone initial it. Oh. <laughs>